A whole new world of possibilities is about to open to you. And you'll explore that world through an exciting new tool that represents a dramatic leap forward in table saw technology. It's the BT3000 10-inch table saw from Ryobi. And you'll soon discover why there's nothing like it on the market. Nothing. Using advanced engineering and design, the BT3000 offers more features, greater precision, and more versatility than any other table saw in its price range. It combines the performance of a stationary tool with the convenience of a benchtop table saw. Actually, the BT3000 is such a breakthrough tool that it's more than just a table saw. It's a precision woodcutting system for tradesmen and serious woodworkers like you. With optional accessories, the BT3000 becomes an even more versatile woodworking center with enhanced capacity and capabilities. The BT3000 offers an exciting world of woodworking possibilities, and you're probably anxious to begin exploring them. But first, invest a little time and get to know your new BT3000 a little better. To begin with, this video is not a substitute for your BT3000 owner's manual. The manual includes important information you'll need to assemble, operate, and maintain this precision tool properly. The BT3000 is an extremely useful tool. However, like any power tool, certain precautions should be taken to avoid injuries. For instance, be sure to use a properly grounded outlet. Always dress safely. Don't wear loose clothing that can get caught in moving parts. Always wear safety glasses or goggles. And use the right extension cord for the job. These are merely a few of the safety measures you should follow. That's why it's essential for you to read your owner's manual completely before operating the BT-3000 and to follow all recommended safety guidelines. A note of caution. In a few scenes of this video, we removed the safety guard from the BT-3000 to give you a better view of certain applications. However, you should never remove the safety guard when operating the BT-3000. It should be used for all applications. The first step in assembling the BT-3000 is to make certain you have all the tools, parts, and components you will need. So unpack the saw and lay out all loose parts on a clean surface. Inspect the parts and compare them with the illustrations in your owner's manual and the loose parts list. You'll want to do this before you dispose of any packing material so you don't accidentally throw away something important. Two wrenches come with the BT-3000 for blade removal and installation. Be certain to secure the saw to a stand or workbench capable of supporting the load. Here, we are using the optional Ryobi accessory work stand. Any table saw will vibrate in use, so you'll want to secure the saw to the stand or bench at all four corners using the bolts, washers, and hex nuts provided. Now let's install the sturdy extruded aluminum front and back rails. First, loosen the front rail clamps from the tightened position. Also, loosen the rectangular rail holders to allow the front rail to slide over them. Make sure the long dimension of the holder is in the horizontal or sideways position. 
Take the front rail with the calibrated scale facing toward you and mount it on the rectangular rail holders. Check to make sure the rail clamps will securely clasp the rail before sliding the entire assembly into position. Then slide the entire front rail assembly into position over both clamps and secure. Now place the end caps on both ends of the rail and the front rail is installed. Next, we move to the back rail. To help you position the rail properly, place the end cap on one side. The long part of the rail profile goes up against the saw. Then follow the same installation procedures you used for the front rail. Now you're ready to install the sliding miter table. First, make sure the front and back clamps are open. Place the miter table on the rails. Then secure the clamps front and back. Release the table lock. Now the table should slide easily from front to back. Next, you can install the specially designed BT-3000 miter fence. This is the miter fence holder. You must attach it to the miter fence before attaching the fence to the table. Loosen the attachment bolt by adjusting the clamp. Make sure the adjusting clamp is loose enough for the bolt to slide into the slot. Now slide the clamp's tabs into the grooves in the miter fence. You will note that there are two pivot holes on the BT-3000 miter table. Mount the miter fence to the table by installing the movable pivot pin on the underside of the miter fence into one of these holes. We'll explain the use of pivot holes later. At the same time you install the movable pivot pin, place the adjustment bolt into the slot. Secure the adjusting clamp, but do not tighten it yet. Check to see if the miter fence glides smoothly on the miter table. Then, tighten the clamp. Now you're ready to install the BT-3000 accessory table. First, be sure the clamp on the front of the table is open. Then mount the accessory table onto the back rail, placing the tabs into the mating grooves in the rail. Now secure the front clamp. To install the BT-3000 self-aligning rip fence, screw the locking handle into the rip fence mounting hole. Installing the rip fence is very easy. Place the back lip on the back rail. Then pull slightly toward the front of the unit. Lower the front of the fence onto the guide surface atop the front rail. The rip fence should glide smoothly on the rails. To position the rip scale indicator properly, loosen the screw, lower the indicator against the rip scale, and tighten the screw. This will position the indicator against the scale for better accuracy. Here's how the self-aligning rip fence works. When you push down on the handle part way, the rip fence grabs the front rail in three spots, aligning the fence so that it is parallel to the blade. As you push down further, the back of the fence clamps on the back rail so that you have a stable and rigid fence. So by pushing the handle down in one continuous motion, you are automatically aligning the rip fence, then firmly securing it. The BT-3000 blade has been installed and aligned at the factory. It's a thin curve 36 tooth carbide tipped blade, which was designed, tuned and balanced specifically for the BT-3000. Now you'll want to install the blade guard. For safety's sake, you should never operate the saw without it. Remove the throat plate. Raise the blade to its fullest height. Tilt the blade about 30 degrees. To install the blade guard, loosen the two attachment nuts found on the guard mounting plate.
Do not remove the nuts, just loosen them. Slide the riving knife down between the shims. Retighten the two attachment bolts and check to see that the blade and riving knife align. You may have to repeat this step until you have proper alignment. If you change blades, you will have to realign the blade and riving knife for different blade widths. To do this, refer to the settings and adjustments section in your owner's manual. After checking the blade guard assembly for clearance and free movement, return the blade to zero degrees. Reinstall the throat plate into the opening. Lower the blade as far as it will go. Secure with screws and tighten. Your BT-3000 is now fully assembled and ready to run. But before you operate the saw, you should be aware that the BT-3000 is equipped with a double safety feature. To operate the tool, the power cord must be plugged into a standard 120 volt receptacle that's properly grounded. And this second cord must be plugged into the receptacle on the body of the saw. Accessories can also be operated using this receptacle. In order to turn the saw on, you'll need to insert this removable key plate. The saw will not start without the key plate in place. The key plate also serves as an extra safety feature. When you take it out, the saw won't work. The BT-3000 is completely aligned and squared at the factory to assure that you'll get the highest level of performance from this precision tool. Make sure the tool is still properly aligned after shipment by following these steps. First, unplug the saw from itself. To check the alignment of the rip fence, lift the locking handle so that the rip fence can move freely. Now place a framing square beside the blade and move the rip fence up to the square. Check the measurement on the front scale. Move the fence back and turn the framing square 180 degrees and check the measurement again. If the two measurements are not the same, loosen the two screws on the fence and align it with the framing square. Retighten the screws when the fence is aligned. To set the rip scale, you should put the rip fence up next to the blade. Loosen the accessory table clamp, the rail clamps, and the miter table clamps. Slide the rail to where the indicator on the rip fence points to zero on the scale. Retighten the clamps. Now you can be sure of precise measurement to the right side of the blade. Let's prepare to make some test cuts for alignment. But before plugging the saw back in, make sure the switch is in the off position and the blade guard is in place. Make two or three test cuts. If they are not true, repeat the alignment procedure. The sliding miter table is set at the factory to be perfectly parallel and square to the blade. However, it is possible that during shipment, the table could have come out of alignment and may need to be realigned. So before making any cuts, check to see if the miter table is still in precision alignment with the blade. Simply follow these steps. First, Unplug the saw to avoid any accidental startup. 
Make sure the rail clamps and miter base clamps are locked in place. Do not loosen any screws yet. Raise the blade to its maximum height. Then slide the miter table to the front of the saw as far as it will go. Make a reference mark on the end of the miter table with a pencil. Put a framing square flush against the blade and place a reference mark on the blade. Be careful not to touch any of the carbide tips with the square. Rotate the blade until your reference mark appears toward the front of the throat plate. Now, measure the distance between the blade and the edge of the miter table at the mark. In this case, it's eight and a quarter inches. Slide the miter table fully to the back of the saw. Rotate the blade so the reference mark is at the rear of the throat plate. This eliminates the effect of any variance in the flatness of the blade. Place your framing square against the reference marks on the blade and miter table at the rear. And measure the distance between the blade and the edge of the miter table at the mark. This measurement is eight and a quarter inches also. When the two measurements are equal, the miter table is in alignment. Later we'll talk about what you should do if the measurements do not match. For now, let's assume the miter table is aligned parallel to the blade. Next, you will need to check the miter fence alignment. First, attach the miter fence to the sliding table. Move the fence against the quick stop so that it is set at precisely zero degrees. Tighten the clamp to hold the fence in place. Check for spaces between the square and the blade. Rotate the blade and check for spaces between the square and the blade until the entire blade has been checked. Even if the fence is square, you'll want to make a few test cuts before using a good workpiece. To this point, we've assumed that the table and fence are perfectly aligned to the blade. But what if they are not? Let's start with the miter table. If any adjustments need to be made to bring your BT-3000 into alignment, the miter base should be adjusted first. Now let's assume that we discovered the table was off 1 16th of an inch when we checked for alignment. Here's how to make the adjustment. The sliding miter table rests on a base that must be adjusted so that it's parallel to the blade. To adjust the miter base, first be sure the front and back clamps are locked. Then slide the miter table toward the front of the saw. Place your framing square flush against the blade and make a reference mark on the end of the table. Slide the miter table toward the back of the saw. You'll see two screws in the miter table base and two screws holding the grippers. Don't loosen the screws holding the grippers. Using a Phillips screwdriver, loosen only the left screw on the base at the front. Do not loosen the screw on the right side of the base. It will be used as a pivot point during the adjustment. Slide the miter table toward the front of the saw and release the back clamps. Again, you'll see two screws in the miter table base and two screws holding the grippers to the table. Don't loosen the screws on the grippers. Loosen both screws in the miter base at the back. The mark you made previously on the blade should be positioned at the rear of the throat plate. Slide the table to the back of the saw. Place a framing square against the blade and move the miter table 1 16th of an inch to line up the mark with the edge of the square. Remember, you're adjusting the table to match the front measurement you determined while checking the miter table alignment. Once your adjustment is made, tighten the left screw on the base in the front. Slide the table toward the front of the saw then tighten both back miter base clamps to hold the base in place. And tighten the two screws located at the rear of the miter base to complete the adjustment. Now you'll need to recheck the alignment in the front to make sure both measurements are equal. Move the miter table forward. Turn the blade so the mark is at the front of the throat plate. Use a framing square to measure the distance between the blade and the mark on the table in the front. If the dimensions are not the same, repeat the adjustment procedure. Now you should check the quick stop indicator. 
The quick stop is preset at the factory to stop the miter fence at exactly zero degrees. However, adjustments to the sliding miter table may alter this setting. If the quick stop is not set at precisely zero degrees, make the following adjustment. Use a screwdriver to adjust the cam located at the quick stop. The angle indicator should be positioned precisely in the center of the zero degree mark. Once the miter base is aligned parallel to the blade and the quick stop is set precisely at zero degrees, you are ready to check and adjust the miter table and fence. If you found the miter fence to be out of square with the blade during the checking procedure shown previously, follow this procedure to adjust the miter fence. Begin with the miter fence set at zero degrees and secure it with the clamp. These are the sliding pads on the underside of the miter table that enable it to move on the base. We will be adjusting these two pads only, the ones toward the back of the saw. The sliding pads are mounted on eccentric screws that can be adjusted by loosening the hex nuts on top of the miter table. To adjust the fence, use a 3 8 inch nut driver or socket wrench to loosen both of these hex nuts. While holding the hex nuts in place, reach under the table and loosen the eccentric screws. Once the rear hex nuts and screws are loosened, the miter table will have maximum side-to-side -side play. Take your framing square and place it against the miter fence and the blade. With the framing square in place, push the table toward the blade. Keeping a firm hold on the table, rotate the blade several times to make sure your alignment is perfect. Once your alignment is square to the blade, that is, no spaces can be seen between the blade and the framing square, maintain pressure on the table as you tighten the eccentric screw and hex nut closest to you. Then tighten the other eccentric screw and hex nut. With both hex nuts tightened, there should be no more play in the table. And your adjustment of the miter fence is complete. Check the miter fence alignment once again, and repeat the procedure if necessary. Now your BT-3000 should be truly aligned, parallel, and square, and ready to do its best for you. However, you should check alignment periodically as part of routine maintenance. With your BT-3000 all set up and ready to go, let's check out some of the important features that make it so unique. The BT-3000 has an innovative system of sliding rails. You won't find anything like this feature on traditional table saws. The sliding front and back rails provide extra support and control where needed on either side of the blade. Other major differences are quickly apparent because the BT-3000 is designed with three versatile tables. The movable accessory table, the stationary main table where the blade is located, and the sliding miter table. Let's start with the miter table. Note that it's a sliding table, a feature which is usually available only with much more expensive stationary models. The BT-3000's whole miter table slides forward smoothly, providing added support and total control over your work. There's an oversized miter scale with wide spacing between angles, so it's easy to make precise and repeatable settings, a major improvement over the smaller, hard-to-read scales on most table saws. The BT-3000 has an extra-large miter fence. 18 inches long. That's almost triple the size of most fences, even those found on many large stationary saws. The longer fence is essential for providing the support and control needed when cutting larger stock. The movable miter fence can be positioned in either of two pivot holes. The fence is secured in the pivot holes by a movable pivot pin. The pivot hole closest to the blade provides plenty of space to accommodate most work pieces.
The pivot position farthest from the blade enables you to make miter cuts in larger and longer pieces of stock. For cross-cutting, most conventional table saws have less than 10 inches of workspace from the blade to the end of the table, offering minimal support for larger stock. But the BT-3000, with its sliding miter table, has 16 inches from blade to fence, providing you with greater support and control. Notice how you can slide the miter fence right next to the blade, providing more support for the workpiece and minimizing tear out. The tips of the fence are made of plastic so they won't damage the blade if they inadvertently get in the way. Now let's see the miter system in operation. The sliding miter table is factory set for accuracy right out of the box. The saw plugs into itself for convenience and safety. The accessories for the BT-3000 also plug into the same outlet, so you can run them with a single easy access on-off switch, eliminating the need to fumble under the table for power switches. Before making any cuts, remove jewelry and put safety goggles on. As you know, with traditional table saws, you push stock into the blade over a stationary table. With the BT-3000 sliding miter table, the whole table glides forward smoothly, providing you with much greater control, precision, and safety. In addition to precise miter cuts, the BT-3000 makes perfect cross cuts. Here's a handy feature. After making miter cuts, and you want to make cross cuts at precisely 90 degrees, simply position the fence against this cam and you're ready to go. The standard long fence enables you to cut large stock with great control. The BT-3000's enhanced capacity doesn't stop there. This powerful benchtop table saw's maximum depth of cut at 90 degrees is 3 and 9 sixteenths. So when you're working with nominal 4x4s, you can make cross cuts, and miter cuts with ease. Bevel cuts are just as simple with his easy access control center. First, move the locking cam to the right. Next, turn the wheel to the degree of bevel you want. Now move the cam to the left to secure the bevel. BT-3000 features an oversized scale for precise angle settings. The same control center conveniently sets the elevation of the blade quickly and simply. At 45 degrees, the BT-3000 has a two and a half inch depth of cut. Most table saws don't approach that capacity. We've just begun to explore the BT-3000's versatility and capacity. For instance, there will be times when you want additional support and control over large work pieces. The BT-3000 is designed to accommodate that situation. Simply move the front and back rails to the left or right by releasing the cam locks and sliding the rails. This gives you a full 30 inches of workspace for miter and cross cuts on either the left or right of the blade. Now for even greater versatility, you can move the accessory table next to the miter table for extra support. The BT-3000 offers an extraordinary approach to the ordinary task of ripping wood. That approach combines precision, convenience, and ingenious design. 
Most of the ripping will be done on the right side of the blade using the accessory table and, at times, the miter table. With the rails in the standard position, the workspace between the blade and the fence is 24 inches. Plenty of room to rip most panels in half. By sliding the rails all the way to the right, you increase your ripping capacity to approximately 30 inches in width. If you choose, you can move the miter table over for additional support. The BT-3000 is designed to remove over 75% of the dust from the immediate work area without a vacuum. And here's a unique feature. The dust port moves with the bevel angle, capturing and expelling dust at any angle. With a vacuum, more than 90% of the sawdust is captured. There's a complete line of accessories available to make your BT-3000 even more versatile and productive. To accommodate extra-large stock, the BT-3000 optional wide table kit provides six feet of support on either side of the blade. The kit includes brackets for mounting a utility table made out of standard three-quarter inch plywood. You can build a second table behind the blade to serve as an outfeed surface for large stock. Another valuable optional accessory is the long miter and rip fence kit. The extension attaches easily to the standard rip fence and gives you 42 inches of sturdy support for ripping larger stock. The channeled extension rails allow you to use the rip fence over the full length of the table. The same accessory fence replaces the standard miter fence, providing better control when miter cutting or cross cutting big work pieces. This stop block allows precise repeat cuts and comes with the miter rip fence accessory kit. It can also be used on the standard BT-3000 miter fence. Here's another accessory that provides enhanced control. An optional miter clamping kit secures stock by applying both downward and inward pressure. The workpiece is pressed down on the table while being held tightly against the miter fence, assuring precise cuts of even oversized stock. With an optional router and jigsaw mounting kit, you can get even more productivity out of this extraordinary table saw. Please refer to your owner's manual for safe installation techniques. To use a jigsaw, plug it into the table saw. Depress the jigsaw trigger and activate the lock-on switch. The jigsaw is now controlled by the main switch on the front of the BT-3000's control panel. With a jigsaw mounted on the BT-3000 accessory table, you'll have the ability to cut curves. Scroll work and intricate patterns. A unique circle cutting jig comes with the kit. The jig enables you to cut small and large circles with ease.
To use a router, plug it into the table saw. Activate the switch, and the router is now controlled by the BT-3000's on-off switch. With a router mounted on a BT-3000, a whole world of woodworking possibilities opens up to you. You can turn the router into a shaper with accessories from the router mounting kit. Two movable fences are attached to the rip fence for precise cutting. A see-through guard is positioned for added safety. If you wish, attach a vacuum to the guard for chip extraction. With the same accessories, you can turn the router into a jointer. The versatility of the BT-3000 enables you to move the sliding miter table adjacent to the router mounted in the accessory table, providing the control needed to make perfect tenons. An optional dado throat plate enables the BT-3000 to accommodate both stack and wobble dado blades, giving you the capability of precision dado cutting for various woodworking needs. To make the clean machine even cleaner, this optional dust bag makes sure very little dust escapes into the work environment. A rugged metal work stand was designed specifically for the BT-3000, providing a solid base of support. For your convenience, there are storage clips on the work stand where you can place your rip and miter fences when not in use. When fitted with readily available 4-inch casters, the BT-3000, which weighs only 75 pounds, can be easily moved around the job site or shop. There you have it. The BT-3000. It's precisely what you want and what you need to enhance your woodworking capabilities in the shop, on the job, or at home. We hope this video, used in conjunction with your owner's manual, will help you get full performance and enjoyment from this advanced cutting system. The BT-3000 is just one of many innovative tools from Riobi. Our benchtop line includes the AP-10 10-inch portable planer, JP-155 jointer planer, SC-160 16-inch scroll saw, RA-200 8-and-a-quarter-inch portable radial arm saw, TS-200 8-and-a-quarter-inch compound miter saw, TS-254 10-inch super miter saw, and the TS-380 15-inch miter saw. See the full line of Ryobi benchtop tools at your nearby Ryobi dealer.